at the Coombe Crescent, uh, they built the houses in 1950s yeah. because they needed extra housing for the, the village. village yeah. And someone who walked around the village doing uh, a book about all the local area said um, that loads of like really ugly houses were being built on the edge of the village, just like springing up out of nowhere. Yeah, they said it was disappointing because it spoilt such a beautiful village. However, most of the people in the village now live in Coombe Crescent. So, so we thought we'd go and, go and do some pictures down there. So we'd better not tell them their homes are ugly, had we? <laughs> we'd better not tell them that. Do some of you live true. there? I do. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> well, do you think it's ugly now? Um, I think it's gotten less ugly than it was. Oh, so that's a very good... We know that when we were doing our project about building the houses in the village, that uh, some people felt their houses were ugly compared to the other old houses in the village. But uh, we know that a village is made up of all sorts of different houses, built at different times, and all those things are important to make up a village as it is. Yeah. Should we Good. carry on? Should we, uh, we're going to walk no. down here, and we're going to do a Ren and Now photo. Bella, I need the photo. <laughs> then just a bit We've just been, we looked at the history of your house and we knew that it was a slaughterhouse and the butchers for, yes. a, for a long time and there yes. was obviously the village shop. Yes. But could you tell us about the gargoyles on I the outside can. and how they I got here? I can tell you that they're actually not really gargoyles because gargoyles are for water spouting out of the roof, aren't they? These are called grotesques. So actually my house has not got the right name. Maybe we should change it. No, <laughs> no, thank you. But these actual gargoyles came from Arundel Castle when it was being rebuilt. So the person who built my house went down to Arundel Castle and said, "Have you got any spare stone?" And the man at Arundel Castle said, "Yes, you can have this." So some of this is from Arundel Castle, including the gargoyles. How old are they? Well. It was more than a hundred years ago, it was 1890s when they came here. So they must be a lot older than that, mustn't they? Because that's when Arundel didn't need them anymore. Yes? Um, why are two of them sticking their tongue? I don't know, it's a bit rude, isn't it? <laughs> it's to get rid of bad luck. Is it? Oh, it's thank sort of, you. It's an idea that, uh, that these, these grotesque images, on the, yeah. often they're on the side of churches, yes, so that keeps the bad the badness, the evil out by these by pulling these awful faces, it scares off the devil. How long have you lived here? Seven years. Mm. Um, of course, when we came, it was already a house. But when it was a shop, these two windows were the shop doorway. You've perhaps seen pictures of that. We are just about to take a photo which yes. compares, which will be a modern day version of a photo that was taken hundred or so years ago. Oh lovely. And there are children playing in the road. We are all going to come and stand down at the sign there and I need and then we will get a few of you without your high vis jackets to come and stand here. Okay? Let's go and stand over here. Freya and Flynn and Layton We're going to go down to Copyhold now. William, that's your house, isn't it? The house you're building. And you know lots of information about that. So when we're there... We've the st oh, we've still got the we're folder, I know. I have yeah, to, we should have bought it with Well, us. I haven't done the copying yet. So when I've copied all the important documents in there and we her photos, then we'll give them back to her. Looking at this, can you see which uh, which is the oldest part of the building? Uh, the can, bottom can, you, part and the top. can you tell which of the which do you think is the oldest part? The bottom. The, bo the bottom. They're there. Mm. And why do you think that? Because it, uh, all the stones look like parts are crumbling off. Yeah, I know what's the, the newest bit, the uh, oldest bit. Yeah. Well, the, you you were right. The oldest bit is the stone on the left there because that is the stone that's dug that you find round here, it's been dug out of the ground. The thatch is old, of course, not many houses have thatch on now. Um, and then you look at the main part of the building, on the left it's what? Brick. Brick. And on the right? Stone. Yeah, flint. So 
So which do you think is the oldest of that? those two? The flint. The flint, the flint, definitely. And then the chimney. Now, very old houses didn't have chimneys at all. Did you know that? They just had a fire in the middle of the room. And then the chimney collapsed in on the building, so they had to rebuild it. And you live here, don't you? No, I don't oh. live here. Oh. <laughs> Liz Barrows lives oh. here, but I'm doing, I'm doing work about it. Oh, okay. All right. So okay. we're making clay houses. Again. Maybe you'll live there one day. All <laughs> oh, right. So yes, because the chimney on the side was easy, wasn't it? It's was easy to build a chimney on the side of a house and just move the fireplace to the side. But if you have a chimney in the middle, what's the advantage? Do you think? Um, the, yeah. All the smoke would go up to the middle, so it'd go out. And that's true. But also about the heat. Yeah. And the smoke, if it was inside, it will make a uh, thatch into waterproof so the rain won't get into it. Yeah, the, the smoke gets rid of bugs as well in the yeah. thatch, that's right. But also heating, if you have the, in the middle of the house, it's going to warm the house more, isn't it, than if it's just at the side. So I think that was the reason. But that chimney, those little tiles, is quite old. But you were saying, weren't you, there was a chimney, at the, can you still see the chimney yeah, at this side? Still, is it? Ah, yeah. Along the side and onto the grass over there, you can actually see how tall it is. Oh, yeah. Do any of you lived in thatch houses? In a minute, we are going to go and take some photos of the back of this house. So, this is Copy Hole. William, where are you, William? Can you tell us what you know about Copy Hole? Copy Hole was split into three different buildings where, um, so split into three, where three families lived in it. Her nan lived in the middle. She lived on the left, and then an, another family lived in the right. And, and the man who lived on the right was the, was the ferryman, wasn't he? Yeah, oh, no, ferryman. The ferry. And um, so it has a massive chimney on the side there, which is um, which collapsed in on the building back in back in the day, and they rebuilt it. But the oldest, um, like um, you just said. Um, um, the the wall there is one of the old it's the old one of the oldest bits of of copy hold. When different uh, materials were available, or were the, the most um, the kind of cheapest to buy, or the most of them, um, so it's got a bit of timber framing, it's got a bit of brickwork, it's got some uh, flint work over there, it's got some thatch, some of the roof is tiled, and in fact, it's one of the oldest buildings in the village. And round the side we look up we'll see a window which didn't have glass in originally it just had wooden bars um, when they before they had glass to use as windows so if you look at the bricks below the window some are long and some are short do you see that and when they're long they're called a stretcher and when they're short they're called a header that depends how they've laid the brick so if they've laid it like that it's a stretcher if they've laid it like that it's a header now if you look you'll see there's stretcher, header, stretcher, header, stretcher, header. They alternate between stretchers and headers. And that's called Flemish bond. And um, Flemish means from uh, Belgium. And that was the style of building. And that came over and started to be used in this country. But there was also something called English bond. An English bond was where you had a line of headers and below it a line of stretchers, then a line of headers, and then a line of stretchers. But today, if you look at houses, how are they built with bricks? Yes. And they built header, 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 header. And, and then when it comes to a place like a window or a door, um, uh, it's, a, it's a header. It's, you've got, it's the other way around. They're stretchers. Oh, stretchers. They're all stretchers, yes. And the reason for that is today you have a cavity wall. If you, look, if you live in a modern house, you get one line of, of, of bricks and then there's a gap and then there's another line and that cavity in between helps keep the house warm and dry. But in those days they had a thicker wall and that's why they did it like that. So they, the, the stretchers and headers sort of stuck together a bit like, what's that game? Jenga, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that, that idea. But if you see any brickwork like that, you know it's old because no new house would be built using that type of... A building. Eva and Mrs Maynard 
And I. Will you be in a photo, Mrs Maynard? I'm not talking, though. No, you don't have to talk. You just have to stand. You just have to stand. Because there's a, a lady and her daughter and her granddaughter all in one picture. And You're going to be the granddaughter, are you? No. <laughs> and I thought that we'd be, you know, approximately the right ages to yep. recreate that photo. We need our jackets off. We need our jackets off. Chris, would you do uh, the photo? Can you work that out, Chris, where that... That looks like an archway, doesn't it, there? Yeah. It's a square door, but it's an arch with, with foliage. So it. it's that door there, then? So it's full length in the picture, full isn't length, it? Full length, yeah. And I've got my hand on your shoulder, Mrs Maynard. <laughs> You've been loving it. <laughs> like this. <laughs> uh, this house was originally three, it was three different dwellings, and this part was all one and uh, originally there was a door here that led into this into this part but when the current owners moved in it's a bit too drafty too many doors so they uh, so they took this one out and you can still obviously see the uh, the top kind of lintel bricks That's over there uh, to show where the door where the door was right so it's quite close up this so these were the children who lived in this house and uh, the children lived in this house and were just sitting on the gate Kind of like you might sit on your garden wall or go and play in the garden. So oh, this was the entrance around to, to the side of their house. Lovely, well done you two. It feels like you could barely see you, but that's good, that's good. And this photo is of Mrs. Birchall's mother and she's growing Ooh. lilies and um, when I came round to, to look at Copyhold in the summer, um, lilies were being grown in the same spot. So we should be able to take the picture of this Max, pretty easily. Okay? Hands behind back. I don't know how we acquired that from here. And you you were born here? I was born, yeah, like I say, in cottages, just across the road. And when was that? Uh, six, 1956. Oh, yeah. I was born in the Grand Trump Room. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had a district nurse and all but yeah. up in the cottages behind there behind Mobus cottages that used to be a bungalow but, um, yeah I was born there my cousins were born there uh, three eldest ones in our family were all born there so yeah we're, you know we've been about a while and we're, we're not one of the oldest families at all but, you know. but, uh, so this lady came to this house about the time you were born then yeah yeah so you've known her all your life yeah something like that yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you remember the family she mentioned, the, the lady he was, was it Burton? Yeah, it's vaguely, I suppose. But um, like I say, we moved away for quite a while and then we come back again. So. And what's the main difference now between the people living in the village now and the people living in the village when you were a child? Well, like I say, everybody worked in the village then. You know, most of the people that were in the village worked on either the big house was still a proper house then, the stables were over there, the Rovers cottages and all they were all to do with that or Norfolk Estates, which um, my granddad worked for, he worked for Norfolk Estates at the time. But um, yes, everybody worked in the local area, they didn't, you know, go up to London to work and all these things. You know. And is that how people who live here now work? Everybody... No, lives. I mean they go up to London. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, like I say, with the price of houses and that around here, a local person, it'd be very difficult to get a house around here now. Yeah. But um, yeah, most people work out now, they don't work in the village no more. Mm -hmm. <coughs> there aren't the jobs here anymore. <laughs> no, of course, no. We're going to go down to the wharf now. Uh, the wharf is at the river and it's the place where you used to be able to catch a ferry from here to Amberley and back again. And this man here, Mr Dudden, uh, who's the ferry man, used to live in the right hand side of this house of Copyhold. So he used to live there um, and then he lived in another house in the village that we'll have a look at in a minute. So no um, now the boat isn't there anymore because I mean, it, it sank to the bottom of the ocean once well, so it, it, you can't go across anymore. It didn't sink, they just decided that not enough people were using it and because they if they wanted to get from Berry to Amberley or back they just got in their car and drove. So they decided to just let 
get rid of the boat. You decided not to use the boat anymore, you're right. Right, let's go. We can talk more about these. What are those white This is a really important end of the village. Lots of things happened here. The church, which is behind you, St John's, and the ferry, which we're going to go and see in a minute. The ferryman or ferry woman used to live in this cottage here, which is now called Jessamine Cottage, but it used to be called Ferry Cottage. And then a bit later, the ferry people moved into this cottage here, which is now what we call Ferry Cottage. Uh, and in fact, this is where the Duddons lived, the, the ferry people. We'll go down to the ferry now and see if we can uh, see where the ferry used to what used to travel like from. Ferry, like an actual ferry. Yes. So the ferry actually looks like this. The ferry is just a big boat. Oh. And on our badge is the ferry oh. and the ferryman. In fact, it's a ferry lady. Hello. Hi. Used to go from these steps. In fact, these steps were rebuilt not too long ago uh, because the old steps weren't very good and you'd get on the ferry here which is a long low boat and the man or woman sometimes it was a woman would have a long pole and they'd kind of push the boat across to the other side to, of the river to Amberley and then you'd get off and walk off to Amberley and if you're coming back the same would happen the other way but the ferryman always lived on Berry's side uh, if you look at the river now, it's really high, the tide is in, so you can't see the bottom of those steps. But uh, if we came back in a couple of hours, the tide would be out and you could see the bottom of the steps, kind of like the ones you can see in this photo. Is that here? That's here, this picture is here. You can see the downs over there. But where's mm. the steps then? The steps are under those, under this water. Okay. Yet yeah, those poles aren't there anymore, but these steps are there in fact you they're must, new you must admit the the terrain looks a bit different the terrain yeah. does look a little bit different but you can still see you see Amberley Mount over there uh, and that they've built this up but it's, new terrain. it's no, new terrain yes but this bit here used to be for a while a kind of a dry dock and when they needed to fix boats they bring them in here and they could fix them uh, out of the water but um, near the water and then they could bring them back in. Well boats get like boats get broken like everything else gets what, broken. Right there, that used we to be like a house. Yeah. No, it used to be a house, a, a dock. Workshop. Like a workshop for boats, yes. Oh. When the ferry was working it was because so many people worked on the land and so many people were going from one farm to another or one big house to another. But people don't really do that now, do they? People are walking for pleasure. Um, and particularly in the winter, I doubt if you get many people walking down here. Um, but uh, yes, you could always offer to be the new ferry woman in, in a few years' time. <laughs> so Mrs. Bourne was talking about the ferry and Bob Dudden, wasn't it? Bob Dudden. Now, I knew uh, a, a very old man, he's dead now, and his name was Bob Copper. And some of your parents may know the name Bob Copper because he used to sing songs, old Sussex songs and his family, his children, grandchildren, even great-grandchildren now sing the songs. And I once asked Bob, when you were a young man, what was your ambition? And he said, my ambition was to be the ferryman at Berry," <laughs> Which was a sort of jokey answer because he thought, well, that would be a nice life, wouldn't it? Pushing the boat backwards and forwards across the river. But it might not have been quite so good in the winter, perhaps. Um, yeah, did you want to ask something? Yeah. Mm. Um were his, was he famous for singing songs? He was, yes. If you look him up, when you go back to school, if you look up Bob Copper on, uh, on the internet, Wikipedia, you'll find a lot about him and you'll hear him singing songs and his family singing songs. Mr they... Mott oh. will, uh, will oh, yes. show you some of that yeah. too, because Mr Mott knows all about He'd know all about. He'd know all about that. Now, I'm just going to read you something, and it won't take long. And um, this, is, this is a book that's written by a man, he's still alive, and he's, he's quite old now, and he wrote a book, <coughs> Sussex, City Streets to Sussex Lanes, and he wrote about growing up in a village like Berry. In fact, uh, his um, parents moved around all the time to different villages. And um, 
I'm going to, this is, this, this is from the 1950s, so we're talking, what, 70 years ago or more. Anyway, this is a bit of a weird story, and see what, see what you think this is about. And so he's, so this is, this is this man, David Johnson, and there's a picture of him as, when he was a boy, about your age, really, um, and uh, saying something strange that happened in the village. So he'll mention various names that you won't be familiar with, but they're names of people he knew in the village. Old Harry had not been back at work for more than a week or two before both households experienced a most uncanny phenomenon. The day had been typical of early autumn, so just the right time of year. The day had been typical of early autumn, damp, chill and overcast, though clearing to a brighter afternoon. We had gone to our bedrooms, the break in the weather having come too late for any outdoor amusements and besides the old man expected his children to be asleep by 7.30 most nights. The light was failing fast and we lay on our beds still fully dressed straining our eyes to read in the ensuing dusk. All was silent apart from the occasional irritating snuffle, snort or cough that was always apparent in my brothers in their moments of concentration. Suddenly that studious quiet was broken by Harry, Harry bellowing up to us, demanding that we get to bed and stop hanging things out of the window. We all looked up from our books, puzzled by his accusation, and shouted back to him, almost in chorus, We ain't doing nothing, Pop, we're reading. Well, one of you are, he bawled back. We were a little bemused when he told us that he and my mother had seen something distinctly white prowl by the sitting room window. Well, it was nothing to do with us, we protested. Then it must be them kids next door playing about, he said angrily from the foot of the stairs. I'll go round there and soon put a stop to that. With this, we watched him from the top of the stairwell stride out through the back door, leaving it fully open as he went. No sooner had he gone than there was a knock on the same rear door, and there stood the dairyman, Franz, his figure a dark silhouette in the doorframe. My mother, who had noticed him walk by the front room window, had glided through to greet him. Hello, Nelly, he said in an almost apologetic, apolo apologetic voice. Thought I should tell you to know your children, they are playing about hanging something white like a pillowcase out the window. It upset my wife terribly. The colour drained a little from Nellie's face as she took in what the man had said, for as it sank in she suddenly realised that there might be some greater mystery in the strange event that, that, that first supposed. She composed herself, then stoutly defended her four sons by making it clear that they were all upstairs quietly reading. So it must be your children, she continued. Harry's just gone round to see you about the same thing. You just missed him. He went round the back as soon as you came round the front of the house. You see, we saw it from our window. The now confused neighbour rested an elbow on the door and stood there, asked after a while, looking dumbfounded. But my children say that they've been asleep the past hour, he mumbled. Just then, Harry returned and interrupted the perplexed man and between them they conferred and prattled away into the evening but could come to no conclusion as to what had just happened. What do you think that was all about? Yes. They saw a ghost. They saw us. Could be, couldn't it? Something strange and white went past their window, yes. Snow. Snow. That's a logical explanation. Yes? Um, it might be a goose. A goose, yes, yeah, that's a, in the country. A very good idea. Any any ghost stories oh. in Bury? Yes. Oh, wait, yes. Oh. yes, yes. Let's go on. In our school, um, the the old headmaster pushed pushed his wife down the well. No, that's they, not true. They they fell down. The story about that is that we know that the old headmaster in 1874, his wife died from being pushed down a well. And we know that shortly afterwards, he remarried one of the uh, girls who was his kind of teaching assistant. And so there are all sorts of, you know, questions about did she just fall down the well or was she pushed down the well? We don't know. But her grave is in the graveyard. Last year we yeah, went to... Graveyard. Yeah, the graveyard at the church. And last year we went to find the graveyard. 
There are also apparently ghosts at Fogden. <gasps> Who's doing Fogden's house? Yeah, apparently there are also ghosts at Fogden's. Oh. Oh. They're often passed down, aren't they? Through, yes, they, through one uh, person to their children or their grandchildren. The yeah, and they change, and so the stories often get a bit more exciting as time goes on, or a bit creepier. Yeah. Now we're probably running out of time, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, because we could do. Uh, we could. What, what go time go. is it? It is five past eleven. Yeah, so we need to leave by <coughs> half eleven. So I think, what yeah. we're going to do is we'll walk back up the village. There's one more picture that we can do on the way up, which is Berry House. Yeah. And Berry House was um, destroyed in a fire and rebuilt and we've got to walk right past it. Oh, right. So, um, Can I do the so this is Berry House and the author John Galsworthy used to live here but he only lived here for the last little bit of his life. He loved it here so much that he wrote a poem called Berry Hill which we looked at last year um, but this house looks really old doesn't it mm -hmm. which is it does look really old but actually it's not really old it's only just over a hundred years old and there was another house here before but it burnt down in a really terrible fire and here i've got a picture of the house while it's being burnt down no and i know while it's being burnt down the owners decided that they were so annoyed so upset by their house being burnt down they were going to build it bigger and better. And so they created this enormous building, which it's looks ancient. really impressive. Uh, and it's in its own fact at a different angle. Berry Oldbury House used to be at a different angle, uh, not kind of face onto the road like this. Yes. Is this the house where the the mum and the, the family slept in one room, the nan slept in the middle? No, it's not. But there is another interesting story about this. Oh. The oh land that Berry House owned was huge it went right up there and if you looked at those maps you know we looked at that sale map from 1874 mm -hmm. where they were selling bits of land from the village oh, yeah. the, lot ones. The, the ones with the lots oh, yes yeah. that one um, all this land was owned by Berry House and Flynn your granny and granddad live in a house which was the gardener's cottage it was built for the, the gardener of Berry House to work in and next door was Paddock Cottage, which was built for the man who looked after his horses. A, a lo lovely village and so much history. Uh, you're very lucky to be here and, and enjoy all this heritage. Yeah, this, this, this style in the early, early, late 19th, early 20th century, um, there was an architect called Lutchins. Yeah. Yeah. And he, this man Lutchins, built houses to make them look as if they were very old. And it became very popular for rich people to have houses built like this. Um, and even the roof, you see, look, that almost looks old, doesn't it? Because they've used, that stone is called Horsham Slate. And it's not really slate, it's, it's stone, but it came from a quarry not far from Horsham. And lots of houses had roofs made of that. And you have to have massive big timbers because it's such heavy stone, the roof would collapse. I just want to help the environment by can we try not to litter because I found all of this a random hairband, some glass, some more glass and some plastic and some animals are colour blind and we don't want animals to eat nature to eat we want animals to eat nature and stuff. We don't want them to eat plastic and glass and hairbands because it could really harm them. And humans are actually harming animals more than animals are harming us. So please can you try and actually bring like a bin bag or a bag with you and maybe actually also some gloves around with you in your car or something so that hopefully we could try and save the world because if we don't keep this, if we don't try and do that then eventually humans and the world will basically be extinct.